Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Assuming me on Twitter, the gaming drag today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Minotaur Hotel. So y'all, excuse me, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> what truly hurts is thinking about our guests. For all this time, I've wondered what happened to them. I hope they found belonging elsewhere. Huh. Ask your question. Who lived here? What type of people used, used to consider this their home? Just about anyone in need. If fate saw it fit for them to stumble here. Orphans and runaway children. Homeless wanderers chased by their pasts. Shell-shocked men seeking respite. Those who have no one else and no place to call home. Before the last master took over, the hotel belonged to a man who fought in... The First Great War. Master Jean-Marie. He saw fit to bring in those displaced by bloodshed. His voice falters for a moment. You hear a little crackling. A cracking. A little cracking. The hotel was glorious then. Master Jean-Marie survived the first war, but not the second. So his brother inherited the hotel and saw fit to enact his will against me. He pulled the hotel's deed from your breast pocket. So, it's this that makes the new. It's, it's this that makes me the new master. Correct. The ownership of the labyrinth was transferred to you. I always know who the current master is and his name. You asked all your questions. Another comes to mind now. Well, that's a... Creamy nub. What's your name? He hesitates before answering. His burning eye shifts ever so slightly. The master holds the right to pick my name. But if it is your wish to know, the one I was given at birth is Asterion. I had to play with the uh, uh, safe for work mode on. There we go. Okay. Asterion. Okay, so we're going to save that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to load it. There we go. Okay. The master holds the right to pick my name. If it is your wish to know, the one I was given at birth is Asterion. Asterion the Minotaur, adopted son to King Minos of Crete. Asterion looks up to you as he speaks. Perhaps in the distant past, those words, adopted son to King Minos of, Gre of Crete, brimmed with pride. But today they drip with the nostalgia and hope of a man who, for the first time in decades, utters his own name. For a split second, his remaining eye reflects a strand of light from outside. He realizes then how tired, thirsty, and hungry he is. But it doesn't matter. After all, he cannot die. As a servant, his duty takes precedence. The Minotaur readjusts to a kneeling position. The cracking of his kneecaps bounces off the cold room's walls. He bows his head to you. The bond between jailer and prisoner is born from the deed, while that between master and servants is willfully chosen. Will master hear my oath of servitude? You raise an eyebrow at the skeletal Minotaur's gesture. You cannot muster a response in your silence. The Minotaur glances up to you. He starts shaking, barely able to hold his hands together. His lips tremble in anticipation. Master, the labyrinth was designed to torture me. The Minotaur's voice cracks. For the first time, you notice a tail thrashing behind him. The oath of servitude is what keeps it at bay. Please, Master, allow me to recite it and take me into your service. Can only nod in response. With your authorization, he is able to proceed after a minute to bring himself to together again. By the previous pro by the provisions under the statute of Joseph the Merciful, the prisoner Asterion pledges loyalty and servitude to the labyrinth's master. The prisoner is made keeper of the hotel above the valley and has bequeathed the power to realize the master's will. The master in turn binds the labyrinth, forbidding its malicious entities from leaving said valley. The realm was engineered to torture the prisoner, and indeed its mission shall be accomplished. The prisoner will carry the burden of servitude, but shall not suffer the labyrinth's wrath within the hotel's territory. The prisoner, shielded by his master's will, is made safe as long as his duty is fulfilled, under the terms of the statute. Asterion dares not to look up to you. Once he finishes his oath, his silence is broken only by the drops of sweat dripping from his trembling face. It's like, y'all, water time. Alrighty. This is a lot of information taken at once. If you want anything from me, you'll have to explain things a little better. For starters, gods? 
Are you telling me gods are real? Yes, pardon me, I failed to consider the times. The gods, they are, or perhaps were, quite real. I cannot know for sure the specifics, but they seem to have disappeared. Back in my time, they were quite present among the lives of men. And more often than not, mortals were worse off for it. I don't know how long I've been here, nor what changed since then. But from the stories I heard, it seemed that most traces of the supernatural had vanished from the world of the living. Does the mass, does the, does, blah, does that answer the master's question? Not completely. What were the gods like? They, it was rare for mortals to know them personally, but the consequences of infuriating them were plain to see. The pantheon was respected, but above all, feared. They were not merciful. You can see it for yourself. They sentenced me here. This is a lot to take in if I'm being honest. That Greek gods are real, or at least were, is kind of life-changing. Are all their gods real too? All others? I don't know. I believe many of them were, yes. But I can't know for sure as I, as I do regarding the gods from my time. Were there other minotaurs? Or minotaurs? No. I was the only one. Never saw or heard of another minotaur in all those centuries. There are other supernatural beings. A few have appeared in the hotel here and there. Some are staff members, even. But they've grown so very rare as of the last few centuries. But no minotaurs. But... Why haven't I seen them elsewhere, then? Do they live in the woods, isolated from civilization? Back before I got locked here, they used disguises. They passed as regular humans by using a charm. But I wouldn't know if but I wouldn't know if that is still what they do today. And this oath you were talking about, what does it mean? It's what protects me, my lord. There are creatures in the valley. They cannot harm me inside the hotel as long as I am under the master's service. The previous oath remained for as long as the hotel remained without a master. With your arrival, I am made vulnerable again. Please, allow me into your service. Will Master Ryan take Asterion as his servant, under the terms of the statute? Accept Asterion. Very well. Assuming you are speaking the truth, yes, I accept you as my servant. Your words bounce off the walls and slither their way out of the cold room. The light dripping from the door behind you falters. Your shadow, draped over the Minotaur, flickers and shifts instantly. The world itself shudders under your words and responds by slithering into a new shape around you. Asterion still looks down, his frame now slats further forward and no longer shaking. My gratefulness knows no bounds. I shall not disappoint. I may be in a sorry state now, but I'll be quick to recuperate. If Master so allows, I will take my leave. I need only take a trip to the infirmary to patch myself up. He raises his head ever so slightly, glancing at the doorway. I am still unable to leave the room, until you command me otherwise. Oh, I thought this was safe for work. That is not safe for work. That is Venus. I'll just leave this one for you blurred. Offer to escort him. Allow the stranger to leave. Offer to escort him. Yeah, he's a good boy. Uh, let me uh, save that right there. Yeah, one second. The old water time. I, uh, let's see. Let me, uh, yeah. Let me uh, go back to the title screen, okay? And then we'll continue, y'all. Let's, uh, Make sure it's safe for work mode is on. Yes, okay. So we shall continue, and there we go. Okay. That's not safe for work. That's a shriveled penis. Alright. Offer to escort him. And dying as he may be, the Minotaur's body is atrophied. He won't go far on his own. You kneel down to his level. Despite the darkness, you can make out the you can make out the scapula and soggy sagging skin. Should you walk on your own? Asterion averts his eye by looking down into his legs. Master ought not to worry about me. I can make it to the infirmary on my own. I've been through worse. He won't look up to you. There's just a hint of pride in his voice. Live strange leader. I'm commanded to accept your help. Ah, uh, fine. Alright. Very well. You have my permission to leave the room. Without uttering a word, the Minotaur bows to you, then puts his hands on the ground to try to rise up. He struggles first. He struggles first in snapping his knees from his noon position, and then in finding his balance. He succeeds after holding on to one of the shelves. One step at a time, he ambles toward the door, 
taking breaks to rest against the wall and adjust his eyesight to the light. Hmm. It takes a long time, but he leaves the cold room and makes his way to the infirmary. He follows him closely, making sure he doesn't trip and get hurt. His back is covered in bed sores. Against all odds, Asterion can indeed make it on his own. The infirmary is like looking into a period piece about the Second World War, with an added layer of dust and rust. Much like the kitchen, it was evacuated in a hurry. There are clipboards strewn about, medication vials left half opened, and a hypodermic needle still loaded with a sickly yellow liquid. Squinting his eye, Asterion walks up to the drawers. He examines each one, silent, until one of them reveals heart shards of green glass and a purple dried out stain. The Minotaur slatches forward and sighs. He scrapes a finger on the drawer, trying to gather some of the purple dust, but it's no use. He continues looking around, and you do the same. All you find are dusty badges, long rotted medications, and deep in one of the drawers, a nearly empty bottle of wine. You hold it up against the window. There's, there's just an inch of wine left. The cork is dried out and crumbling into dust. In this heat, it must have turned into vinegar already. You're about to put it back when you notice Asterion's gaze, following the bottle. He looks up briefly to your eyes, his face contorted into a pleading frown. The Minotaur nods meekly. The wine heals me. He does not budge until you, until you extend it to him. Only then does he bow. The Minotaur sits on one of the infirmary beds. The cork crumbles to dust when he pulls it, leaving the bottle still clogged. You extend a hand to him. He switches from looking at his bottle held close against his chest to your hand. Begrudgingly, he returns it to you. There's just enough cork, there's just enough cork left for you to pull it out. You return the bottle to the Minotaur. His hands shake as he tries to pour a few drops, drops of the wine into the palm of his hand. He places the bottle in the nightstand. The Minotaur dabs his finger into the wine, leaving a single drop nearly falling from it, and touches one of his wounds. He repeats the process again and again. A few drops fall onto the bed. His face frowns bitterly. When his, hands, when his handful of wine is nearly gone, he rubs his still wet hand on the exposed skull. It's only been a few minutes, but you can already notice some of his wounds healing. The Minotaur notices you watching. His lips are what remains of them curl into a proud half-smile. Yes, I can heal quite quickly, provided I have the wine for it. One second, y'all. Water time. It is a it is a pity the full bottle I had stashed was broken. Hysterion reaches a hand to his back. He flinches as he grazes one of the bed sores. Alfred just spread the wine for him. Let me help you with that. You can't see it. He droops his ear in defeat, knowing full well you are right. However, he extends the bottle back to you with a speed betraying his eagerness. His tail flicks to and fro behind him. You dab a piece of old gauze with the wine and get to work. The miniature's wounds have a black tinge to them. A dark oil seems to have accumulated on them, oozing down his back in clearly defined rivers. He flinches when the fabric touches his damaged skin, but pushes back against you at the same time. His wounds close quickly, in an almost unsettling speed. Five minutes later, you've run out of wine. It was enough to rid Asterion of his most egregious bed sores. He lays a hand on his skull. I'll need a lot more wine for this. You ask if there's any other way you can help him. Asterion has a shy curve on his lips when he looks up to you from the bed. His tail flicks to the left, then to the right. He swings his hooves over the floor. When he speaks, his voice is grave, however, and rumbles with sobriety. You've been too kind already, Master. It would be terribly unfitting of a keeper to impose a task upon his master, let alone as many as you've aided me with so far. His one remaining eye is half closed. Please, worry not about me. He speaks then with a twinge of relief. Unless the master has a task for me, I shall take some rest here and there, and then... I almost choked. I shall take some rest here, and then wash myself. I am most unfitting now for a keeper of the hotel. Master need not worry. You shouldn't have some. Shouldn't you have some food first? What if you pass out in the bathroom? That shall not be an issue. I can obtain sustenance now that you've accepted me into your service. The master commands a labyrinth, and through the oath you have bequeathed, bequeathed me some of your power. I shall not go hungry again. There is much I can gladly teach you about the labyrinth, master. I shall tend to your needs if you know how to lead it. Observe. For half a second, it's as if the entire world blinks out around you and your mind goes blank alongside it. Now Asterion has his hands and has, has in his hands an overflowing bunch of grapes. Do you like grapes? I hope these are to your liking. You hesitate before accepting food from him. Shouldn't he be the one eating first? The master eats first. Only then may the keeper feed. Regardless, master has been kind to me, and I wish to be... and I wish... and I would be happy to share with thee. The Minotaur seems eager to have you taste the grapes. 
They're impossibly sweet, but you only take a few so he may so he may start eating. He flicks his ear and tail at your enjoyment, then starts wolfing down the grapes. He barely looks up to you now. As soon as he's run out of grapes, a new bunch appears in his hands, and a cup of water and more fruit still. When he finally does look up to you, he slows down and tries to clean his muzzle of all the juicy bits. His eye betrays a tinge of self-consciousness. I am sorry. I am more a beast than I am a man. Sometimes it gets the better of me. I should not be so brutish around Master. Although, in my defense, my table manners are excellent when I have the benefit of not being starved. He cracks a half-smile. Even naked with a disfigured muzzle covered with grape juice, Asterion looks up to you with a noble-like posture. His back is straight and his shoulders shift slightly to his broader stance. There's a tinge of pride in his barely noticeable, barely noticeable smile. A small joy of having kept his dignity even in the impossibly harsh circumstances. Perhaps this would be a good moment to let the Minotaur have some privacy. I'll let you have your rest. I'll come back to check up on you later. Asterion interrupts his feeding frenzy to bow to you, dignified, despite the juices running down his mouth and chest. I shall be presentable after watching up, ma washing up, Master. Worry not about me. Help him with the bath. Godfrey, help him with the bath. Uh, y'all, I, I, I need to get that penis off my screen. So, we're gonna go ahead and pause it right there, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribing. That notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.